Okay, as in go. Sorry, one second. Fork Tales, a podcast that feeds the food and beverage world. Oh, awesome. Four Tales is brought to you by Vigor, a branding and marketing agency for passion-driven, innovative restaurant, beverage, and hospitality brands. Learn more at VigorBranding.com. If you love what we're serving up, please give Four Tales a five-star review on your podcast service of choice. Think of it as a tip for good service. Everyone, today I am joined by Ayman Kamal or Kamel. I said it wrong again. You can make fun of me. It's fine. <laughs> um, anyway, I'm I'm really excited to talk to Ayman because um, I, I came across Five Church, the, the brand that he uh, leads uh, in Charleston at first, but he has opened Five Church in Atlanta. And there's some uh, awesome similarities, but I think something so much better going on here in Atlanta. Maybe I'm maybe I'm biased because I'm in Atlanta, um, but I'm really excited to speak to Ivan today. Uh, there's a lot to talk about, so Ivan, say hello. Uh, give a little bit of background. Hello, everyone. Uh, Ivan Kamel here. Uh, I'm owner operator of Five Church Restaurant, uh, and and I agree with you. Uh, I'm biased to Atlanta too. Uh, Five Church Atlanta is. Uh, one of the most amazing restaurants. It's not because it's mine, but uh, uh, our amazing clients uh, state that. Uh, we opened Five Church Atlanta back in 2016, to be exact, on June 24th. Uh, so this is a very exciting time for us. We're coming up to our 50 year anniversary. Uh, I couldn't be happier uh, that I'm a part of Atlanta town now, and uh, I'm originally from New York. Uh, I moved to Atlanta a little bit over five years ago, and uh, I can't tell you how much I love Atlanta, and we decided, me and my family, we live here for good. So it's nice to meet you guys. That's amazing. Yeah, similar to my story, uh, my wife and I, well, we met down here, but she's from New York, or lived in New York for a while as well, but we love it here. We threw down roots, bought a house, uh, we're, we're in it to win it as it is. Um, so one of the things I love about Five Church, when I first encountered it, it's just a very remarkable experience. Um, you know, there, there's some features of the interiors that I loved, but I think one of the things that struck me was there's a fantastic bartender in Charleston um, who really exemplifies fantastic uh, bar keeping, uh, engagement with the guests, the ability to turn out fan, like just really, really good cocktails without breaking eye contact. And I think that just gave me a great impression about Five Church. I could see why you wanted to grow it and create more locations. Um, so one of the features of Five Church on the interior, though, and this is like true to my heart, I loved it. I looked up at the ceiling and I'm like, there's this white, there's white letters all over this dark ceiling. And I'm like, what is, what is this written? Like, is it, you know, Lord of the Rings or a Bible quote or something? And it turns out it's Art of War. And so I wanted to know, uh, did you have a hand in that? And how did that manifest? Yes, I did. Uh, and, and it's a funny story behind it. Uh, our first restaurant in Charlotte. Uh, North Carolina, uh, we did not have much budget to work with. And the ceiling uh, did not look great, and we did not have enough money to build uh, a fancy drop-down ceiling. Uh, so, and, and the ceiling was painted black. And we were a little worried about, you know, what is the proper thing to do for that ceiling? And uh, we didn't want it to look like a nightclub. Uh, or didn't want the room to look damp. Uh, so one of us suggested maybe we should write a book. Uh, and uh, what kind of book? Uh, one of us suggested the, the Bible. One of us suggested uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. some other books. And, and we came up with the idea of what if we can write the Art of War by Sun Tzu. Uh, it's a very inspiring book. I read it like three times, and every time I read it, I learn something new. I mean, this book was written over 2,000 years ago, and they're still teaching this mm -hmm. book in, in so many academies and so many colleges. 
And, and we said, let's try. And we brought an artist, an amazing artist from Charlotte, North Carolina. His name is John Norris. Uh, mm -hmm. and we said, let's try a little piece on the ceiling and we see what it would look like. Uh, and he came and he wrote it and he was, he's a very talented artist and it came out to be amazing. And we said, wow, uh, mind you, we opened the restaurant and he was actually on his back writing the book while we're open for business. And people were so fascinated <laughs> eating, and while he's on his back, it was like, you know, a piece of art. People were talking about it, taking selfies with it. So it became a solid part of our ambience. And we did it in, in the two other restaurants in Charleston and in Atlanta. Uh, in, in Charlotte, it took him about six months to be done. In Charleston, it took him about three and a half months. And in Atlanta, it took him about a little less, a little less than three months. Uh, and the last one, it was amazing. He was working overnight uh, and his wife was helping him. So she was actually reading the book while he's, he's on his back. Uh, right in it. So it was really a great experience. That's fantastic. Yeah, it, I think so often when it comes to interior uh, design experiences, there's a lot of attention paid, of course, to lighting. Um, but the focus is really what's around you in front of your face, what you're sitting on, what you're uh, engaging with. And a lot of times the, the roof, the, the ceiling is forgotten. Um, you, like you said, you do drop ceilings just so you can uh, absorb some sound, uh, get some good lighting in there. But the rest is like, what is the guest going to be engaging with? But uh, I found, um, you know, in Atlanta and in and, and Charleston, where I had been, uh, I just end up staring, even though I've read the Art of War by Sun Tzu and by Machiavelli, which I don't know if you know right. that there's yeah. that one too. Um, and it's just, it's just an amazing thing. It's a good, it's a good talking piece and it's a surprise moment. And we talk a lot about that at Vigor, uh, these remarkable moments. They don't have to be, you know, a hundred thousand dollar sculpture. They can be something as simple as writing on the ceiling that just grabs the attention, makes it worth looking at. So I, I loved that. Um, you mentioned five years. So that is a big number. So to, uh, statistically speaking, uh, a lot of people know that many restaurants fail before even year one, and uh, even more don't even make it to year five. So this is a, this is a, a milestone. Uh, tell me, how did you get here? How did you make it happen? That's a great question. I don't know. <laughs> but what <laughs> I can tell you, every day I think about it. And this year is a very exciting year for us. It, and it is five years is a huge deal for us at Five Church Atlanta. Uh, but I can tell you, by all means, uh, what made this restaurant successful, uh, I will give that to our staff. Uh, we have an amazing staff. Atlanta has one of the most amazing people, uh, you know, hard workers, and they take pride of what they do. And we will also give that credit to our amazing clients. Uh, but to start with mm -hmm. are the amazing class, uh, amazing staff. Uh, one thing, though, we, we so care about is the consistency in our service. Uh, there, is, there are some solid training systems. Uh, we don't, like, I read every review that goes online. It's a, a part of our day. I wake up in the morning, I read my report, mm -hmm. and I look at every review. And there are certain specific reviews I reply to it myself. Because every guest counts and every client that comes in here, we so depend on the fact that on their way out of the restaurant, after having a, a great experience, I am coming back to Five Church to hang out again. And, and we, uh, you know, our success has just has been tremendous. And I will tell you something very uh, like I care about it myself is the last year has everybody been through like uh, the year of COVID 2020 and it was harsh on everybody. <laughs> and, and I was like, uh, does the year uh, 2020 count as a part of the five years? And I will tell you by all means, it counts. It's the hardest and toughest year of uh, the all, of all the five years that Five Church Atlanta been through, and and I'm sure a lot of other restaurants. Uh, so to, to go back to your question, consistency, our amazing staff, and our amazing clients. I'm so grateful to all of these. So yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, the, the fact that you've, like you said, you've made it to five years, and one of those years is probably the most crippling and uh, destructive years for restaurants, uh, and to maintain staff during that, uh, get people to come back, which is a huge topic of conversation right now. It's a, it's a big issue for restaurants. Um, these are all great accolades on top of hitting five years. Um, I think, you, you know, one thing that I, I noticed, I can tell that you're reading the reviews and actually using them to help uplift the staff. But um, there's some good things that happen with a year like 2020. So a lot of people talk about the bad stuff, but let's try to put a little bit of glean on there. Um, when when humans go through something tough together, they come out stronger on the other side. It's it's a byproduct. We have weathered a storm. We have we have uh, battled, you know, uh, an invader, you know, quite literally, you know, with COVID. And on the other side of that is a stronger team bond. Uh, is that something you're experiencing right now? And do you think that'll lead to being able to attract talent and continue to grow Five Church? Absolutely. And and I will tell you, uh, during the tough time. Uh, you know, we we sit and gather together and and we wonder and how are we going to handle this? And I can tell you by all means, the team here at Five Church, every time we uh, we conduct a, a pre-shift before uh, a night that we do not know that it's going to be busy or not, we talk about it and we talk about how important it is to remind our guests that we're here for you and we're going to do whatever it takes uh, to make your experience a, a great experience, a great five church experience. And I have to tell you, it's very touching. You know, uh, we lost some staff, of course. Some people decided to relocate. Some people uh, decided to, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, approach another career. Uh, but we do have some people mm -hmm. who are here from day one, and these people stood with us, and they went through uh, all these tough times, and, and it got us closer to each other. And we sit down, like if you walk into Five Church, uh, the, the downstairs bar, there's a big writing from the Art of War says, there is only we. We live by that. And uh, so it's not we, we, we go and say, oh, it's a punchline in a book, and we just want to impress our clients with with the writing, it is actually, we will always talk how there's only we can can enable us to handle any problems. Uh, and, and our staff firmly believe in it. Uh, and, and I love them for that. Like the, we all sit together and how can we help each other? And I can tell you by all means, we have right now about 60 something people working at Five Church. I, I'm very aware of each and every single one of them. Uh, I know who's married, who's just moved to Atlanta, who's, uh, who's studying, who goes to college. That really enriches my day with things I think about. And I go and say, that, that means something mm -hmm. to me to know what is it you're doing outside. Because when you're okay outside, you come back, you come to rush, the restaurant and your problems hopefully are taken care of and it will make you will pay attention. You will pay more attention to the guest. Uh, and it, it seems to work. It seems to work. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that that's one of the components of, uh, you know, strengthening staff. And, um, you know, I actually hate the word staff. It's more, you know, team is team. also a little bit trite. But I think one of the reasons why we're seeing, um, uh, you know, the uh, people coming back to work being more difficult and, and finding people to come to work difficult uh, there are, of course, anecdotally speaking, and I think quite factually, people are making money um, off of unemployment. And what I've heard from a few leaders is that not that they're just making money off of unemployment, but it's stable. And for a lot of the, the states right now in the U.S., there is still a looming threat of shutdown. And we don't have that, I don't think, in Georgia. I think we're, we're pretty... Uh, we're pretty compromised when it comes to left versus right leaning thinking. But I think that stability is a big one. And that stability starts with a strong leader. And, and from everything you're stating, saying, it seems like you, you do have that because you actually have a genuine care for people. And uh, that comes through. Well, thank you. Uh, and we definitely live by it. And uh, we do emphasize on how important 
each and every single position in the company is from the dishwasher to the marketing to sales to back of the house uh we all know each other uh, uh i remember uh last holiday season and covid was still uh, a, a big thing uh we did have our christmas party believe it or not and we did enforce some uh, social distancing we had a dj but we had like a, a virtual cocktail club upstairs it's it's a large space so at the time we're like maybe 40 45 people but the place fits about 200 people so it, we were okay with the space and we're having a great time having our masks it it's an amazing thing but it made us bond and we always care about that bonding and any time we have a new staff member joins the team we uh we make sure this person is so welcome we make sure that we sit down and talk with them and make sure that they're a part of the team from day one uh i think uh, that makes uh, our retention we went through of course a lot of challenges through uh the year 2020 uh but right now i'm so comfortable i'm so happy with with the team that we have and i'm so looking forward uh a very successful 2021 Yeah, I'm with you. I think we all <laughs> we're all rooting for it. Yes. Um so one of the things with Five Church is uh has a really strong bar scene, of course, not scene but like a uh, program. Um and it also has a really good food program, which we'll get to in a minute. Uh but in Atlanta, you've expanded the Five Church experience to uh let me know if I got this right, but a cocktail club at a rooftop oasis um How did the how does this additional element come to pass? What were was the inspiration, the vision, and is this something that you plan to replicate as you grow Five Church? Uh yes. So all along we have a rooftop. And uh, in the beginning of course, uh our rooftop was totally exposed. And uh we are a big destination for corporate events. That's pre-COVID. Uh corporate events, private events, Uh, the view here is just breathtaking uh and i wanted to be able to use this rooftop all year long especially during the holiday season also i wanted mm-hmm. like we used to call it the rooftop uh and i wanted to give it its own identity and i you know anybody associates a rooftop with party you know cocktails uh views not necessarily uh the food uh the great food that we uh, offer here at Five Church in the first floor in the main dining room so i wanted to do a little separation it is a part of Five Church it is a part of Five Church experience uh but i did not i wanted Five Church dining experience not to be touched and i wanted to be mm. you're coming here you want to have a, a steak it's going to be the greatest steak it's not because you're coming here not because you're coming to party at the rooftop. Uh we have all the elements that uh you know provides an amazing experience at the end to our guest. Come here have a great dinner in the dining room by chef. Uh the most amazing uh ingredients and then if you if you're in the mood for some fun and some great views, we will take you to virtual uh upstairs and we have different cocktails, different set of cocktails, different uniforms. It's a totally different atmosphere. Uh Funny thing, I will tell you a story. I did the build out during COVID. So, I decided to mm. invest some money in enclosing the rooftop. Uh and I wanted to buy some great furniture, add the uh, uh amazing art like the piece behind me. I wanted to create a totally different ambiance from Five Church uh main dining room. and people are telling me you're crazy you're going to spend some money during covid i'm like this is the time of opportunity our guests and the amazing Absolutely. people of atlanta will always remember the experience and when things get better they will come back and i have to tell you we ha- we see uh an increase in business and we see a lot of excitement we still do enforce uh the uh rules of you know social distancing uh masks when you're moving when you're going to the bathroom when you're going anywhere in the restaurant 
uh, always sanitizing stations all over the place. Our staff still using masks uh, and gloves. Uh, but we do want to remind our, our guests that the fun atmosphere, it's even better uh, at Five Church. That's great. So it, it, it's called Virtual? It's called Virtual. Like the, the cocktail club upstairs? Virtual Cocktail Club. And uh, awesome. It, so is that something that you plan to grow over time as well? It will that, will there always be a bifurcated experience? I would love to. Yeah. If, uh, you know, the next restaurant and the next restaurant, uh, if there is uh, an amazing rooftop, uh, I would definitely go for it. Uh, I, I guess it depends on the location, but it's definitely we're getting some amazing sure. feedback from our guests. That's great. Um, so <clears throat> we have a, a really big focus on a cocktail forward experience upstairs, of course, on the rooftop. Um, and Five Church has a fantastic cocktail program on uh, in the core experience. Uh, but there is the food and, and the food is um, it is fantastic. At, at the one I was in, in Charleston, I was impressed. Uh, but you have a great chef here in Atlanta, Chef Mark Alba. Uh, I actually got a chance to work with Mark years ago on another concept, uh, which is how we met. And he has some absolute gems and some fantastic ideas with food. So tell me what attracted you to Mark and, and how has Mark uh, uplifted the five church experience? Well, Mark is one of the most talented, amazing chefs uh, I've worked with. And I work with so many. Um, he's uh, quiet. He, he pays attention to details. He's extremely talented uh, in choosing uh, ingredients and making some uh, great food. Uh, we're we're having Mark here becoming a partner and a partner for other uh, restaurants that we're opening here. He's just a, like this guy is a keeper. We got to keep this man and we got to keep mm -hmm. him making some great food. Uh, and the uh, funny thing that the last uh, couple of weeks we've been tasting uh, some new menu items for spring and for the summer as well. Uh, and it, it's... Uh, uh, the fun part of the day is when he comes and he tells me, come on, I got something for you and uh, some new tasting or a couple new items. Try this, try this. And uh, our menu uh, is a very diverse menu. It's a new American menu, which we put uh, from all over the globe, some items. Uh, you see the Mexican, you see the Italian, you see the Asian, you see the American, uh, the French. Uh, so and Mark loves that. Mark, Mark thinks that it, it's a, a, a fun thing to do is to uh, use his best skills from all over the, the, the world to, to make an amazing menu for our guests to look at uh, or to taste. Uh, so, mm -hmm. so Mark definitely is a great addition to the team. And we look forward uh, to work with Mark in the next. And, and I want to see what he's coming up with for other restaurants too. Yeah, it's exciting uh, when a chef has uh, full reign to explore the flavors of our, our, our world. Um, you know, I get, I get a little bit miffed when people talk about cultural appropriation with regard to food, um, because I, I, I'm like, no, 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 we're supposed to appropriate. That's America. America is appropriating all the beauty of all these flavors of all these cultures and creating something truly American. And so it sounds like that's what's happening at Five Church. And, and that is, I can't wait to actually go experience it again. Um, please, so, do. please do. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I might see you this weekend. We'll see. <laughs> so, um, but so full service uh, restaurants and bars, I mean, they were absolutely, you know, uh, hit really hard uh, by the pandemic. Um, and I think there's a lot of learnings and there's the people that were strong enough to survive or even in some cases, uh, reinvest, double down, because they know that this is temporary. Uh, in your opinion, what does the future for full service restaurants and bars uh, look like? And we'll say specifically, I don't want to say fine dining, but elevated dining, not casual dining, full service restaurants. Um, how do you, what do you think our future looks like? I think it, it's coming back and it's coming back strong. And uh, quite frankly, people are tired of, of staying home. Uh, they're tired of uh, uh, a stressful year uh, and they want to come out and they want to uh, 
they they want their lives back. Uh, so this is great news for the restaurant business and the bar business. Uh, uh, I remember almost a year ago uh, that we, like I have to tell you, at a given time, I thought that I know everything and anything about the restaurant business. Uh, but uh, 2020 proved to, to add to something that I did not uh, expect. And, <laughs> and I was learning as, as I go. Like you come tomorrow, you don't know what's going to happen. Uh, and especially, and, and I'm so grateful to be a part of uh, the community in in a, a town like Atlanta, like where I came from in New York, it was much tougher on the restaurant business. Here, uh, they were a little bit at ease, I would say. Uh, mind you, uh, you know, without sharing political views, there were a little messy situation between politicians. And I remember about a year ago, I came mm -hmm. out and I said, I would like to invite the mayor and the governor to come here, have lunch on me and resolve their differences. They didn't do it, but we were really, this is how I felt <laughs> that, that they should do. And so many people supported me with that. And I hope uh, that is, uh, you know, that's how they would behave for the good of the people moving forward. Uh, I do think uh, there will be some major new ideas coming out, you know, when it comes to the restaurant business. There's so many talented people out there and it all happens, it all happened because of the support and the great support of uh, the great people of a town like Atlanta. But in general, uh, restaurant business will, will, will have a comeback. Uh, bar business will have a comeback. And I would say a year from now, we're going to sit down and high-fiving and saying, wow, look what happened and where we're at right now. That's right. I love that positivity. I'm I'm with you 100. percent I think uh, we're even starting to get there. Um, I, I feel I feel for the people uh, of New York, the restaurant chairs. Um, we're recording this right now in May, and so recently I spoke with a a group of um, restaurant chairs, up and coming visionary uh, through DoorDash's Main Street Strong program. So I did a couple of webinars and then spent some time with these people, and they're you could tell they're hurting but you can also tell they're excited and exhilarated for what's coming next. And I think that is truly the heartbeat of this industry. That is what makes this industry, I would argue more unique than any other industry out there. We, we, are, we, we are in the crunch, we, we know how to operate under pressure. And so something like the pandemic, although can be crippling, it can knock us down, it sure as hell won't keep us down. And, uh, you know, and in fact, I think that's the Atlanta spirit too. a town, keep it down. But like the whole idea is, hey, we're never going to stop. You can't hold us back. And, and I think you you have adopted or helped add to that attitude of this great city. And, um, you know, I'm sorry for people who are in Atlanta. We're we're definitely uh, gushing over our own town right now. But I think the industry as a whole, the restaurant industry, that is the mentality. That is the vibe. And that's what's beautiful um, for you. Let's just uh, play out a scenario where you had to choose a final meal and a final cocktail to have at Five Church, and it would be your last. What is it? What, what is Mark cooking for you, and what are you getting from that bar? That is a tough question. <laughs> <laughs> but a good one. I love every item on the menu and every cocktail, but I can't have all of them. Otherwise, I'll get drunk. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> I didn't say why it was your last one, so maybe <laughs> maybe drunk's fine. <laughs> uh, we the last meal I would say, um, wow, that's a tough question. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, from the menu that we have right now, I knew that was coming. Any, it could be any historic menu. So it could be like the menu you have today or anything from before. Yeah. Well, I'm a meat lover. Uh, as I mentioned before, the steak, when we make a steak, we make a great steak. Um, and uh, the 60-second steak, uh, it's a prime steak, prime sirloin. Uh, it is probably, Mark seasons it like there is no tomorrow. Uh, the seasoning on that steak, you just, it's like butter. You enjoy that. So I will have that as my last meal. Also, a, a cocktail, uh, I would say our top sold cocktail uh, is the holy water. 
and we call it holy water inspired by the art of war uh, and uh, five church uh, so I'll have those and I will also I please don't forget about desserts I, I need if it's my last meal I need some dessert so we have a, a maybe two <laughs> maybe two exactly uh, no worries about maybe two maybe two <laughs> We have a, a cake, we have a dessert uh, called Death by Chocolate by Chef Mecca, our pastry chef. It is just out of the world mm. and it's huge. So even if you can't finish the whole thing, you got you to gotta take some to heaven, I guess. I'm going to heaven uh, if it's my last meal. So yeah. <laughs> peace. Uh, so in case I'm going to get hungry out there. Uh, but uh, I think those three will probably make me very satisfied uh, on my way out. <laughs> I love it. That's amazing. Um, thank you for sharing that. And uh, also your wisdom and uh, your energy. Uh, again, for those who haven't been to Atlanta, I got to say, like, this is the energy. We, we, are, we are in it together and um, we're, we're always on the up and you, you can't hold us back. And uh, I'm, I'm glad to see that you've not just weathered the storm, but you're coming out swinging. And uh, that has to do something with the art of war and what you learned from that book. And um, yeah, just thank you for taking the time, uh, Iman. And I, I look forward to seeing you in person and hopefully talking again soon. Yes, please. Uh, I, I would love to meet you. And thank you for having me. It's been an honor and a great experience. And I would love to see you at Five Church. So maybe we can make you that steak uh, or any item on the menu. Uh, and we have a lot more cocktails for you. So please make sure you stop by. Oh, yeah, you did a good job. I'm, I'm hungry for that steak now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll talk real soon. If you Thank love you. what we served up, please follow us at Vigor Branding on Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, and Medium. Fork Tales is produced by the team at Vigor. Audio and video post productions provided by Zencaster. Music performed by Jet Trash and licensed through musicbed.com. Joseph handles his own hair, makeup, and stunts. Copyright 2003 to 2021, Vigor Graphic Design, LLC, all rights reserved.